In this movie, I'm going to show you how I use layers and triggers in Storyline 2. So I have a simple two-slide project here. Let me start by previewing it for you. So I have five buttons that fall into place, and I can click on each one of these, and it displays some content. So you can see that I'm clicking the button, and then it's showing the content, and then I'm clicking this little X to hide it. Okay, that was created with layers, and here's another way I use layers. So here I've got time content that's coming on the screen. I'm not interacting with it at all. This is good when you have a lot of content to place in a small area. So I can bring text and artwork, and I can have it change transitions as it's coming in. I can do all of that with layers. That's another example of how layers can be really helpful. So let me show you how easy this was to put together. So that was the preview. So let's go back to the storyline file. Again, here is my slide and I've got my five buttons already in place. What I did was I created these buttons in Illustrator and I saved them as high resolution ping files. So once I bring them in and I've selected all of them and resized them by right clicking and using size and position, the next thing I did was I actually aligned them, making sure I'm on the home button here and going up to arrange, align, and I aligned them from the top and then I distributed them horizontally. And the way the distribution works is you want the two end ones in position and the ones in the middle will automatically uh, move so that there's equal space between them. That's a feature I really love. It just helps me to line things up on my grid. The next thing I did, I created layers for each one of these with corresponding names. So here I've got Piggy, I've got Safe, I've got Plant, I've got Box and Magnet, all these different layers that correspond with the buttons. I'm a big stickler for naming layers. I learned that early on many, many years ago with Illustrator and Photoshop because it makes it easier for me. But even more importantly, if I'm part of a team, which I often am, and I need to turn this file over to someone, it's easy for them to figure out what I've done and they don't have to waste a lot of time deciphering what my method was. Very easy to add a new layer. I can just simply go over here to my layers panel and choose add a new layer. I'll just call this one new layer. You can move layers around by grabbing them and moving them up and down. You can right click and duplicate them or delete them if you want to. Very easy to work with layers in Storyline. So once I have my layers set up and I have all my buttons in place, and again I will have used my timeline to go in here and set these up. I had these fly in from the top, so I used my animations to have them fly in and I set them up at half second increments. So all of that was done on the main slide and then how I connect this to my layers, I select each button and I go up to the trigger panel and I added a new trigger. You can see I have one here to show the piggy layer when the user clicks on the piggy button. Here's the safe button. So again, it's going to show the layer safe when the user clicks on the safe button and so forth. So these four are set up, but I left this one purposely so I could show you how this one is set up. This is the magnet button. Here's the magnet layer. So all I have to do is tell Storyline using a trigger what I want to have happen. I want to show a layer. The layer I want to show is magnet and I want it to happen when the user clicks. Because I have this button already selected, Storyline already knows that it's object called Picture 5. I'm going to click OK and that's all there is to it. Now it's set up to automatically show that layer whenever anyone clicks on that button. Another thing I wanted to show here is another trick that I use. When content comes up, I want them to be able to close it. So I just created a simple shape and put an X in it. And I put a white border around it. In my particular case, I like that look. And I added another trigger here on the layer. So the other ones were done on the main slide. But when I'm on the individual layers for each one of these little X boxes, like this one, I added a new trigger. And the trigger I used is to hide the layer. And by default, when you do that, it's assuming you want to hide the layer you're on, which is what I want. So I told it when, you, when someone clicks on this button to hide this layer, and then that takes them back to the main slide again. Very easy way to use layers. Here's another example on this slide. In this case, I have some content that's flying in in the exact same spot on every slide. 
What I did here was I created five different layers and I named them one, two, three, four, and five. And then I set up my content on one and I copied and pasted it to the others. And then I just went in and changed the wording. And in some cases I went in and added graphics and these fly in from the top. I can do whatever I want. This one has a shrink uh, for its exit. So all these different things are done on the layers. And then on the main slide, this is where I determine when those layers will appear. And I do that with triggers. So exam for example here, layer one, I have it set up so that this layer will show when the timeline reaches half a second. And then it stays on screen depending on how long that actual layer timeline is. So in this case, it's five and a half seconds. So at six seconds in, this layer will be finished. And so here's the second one is set to come in at uh, six and a half seconds, 13 seconds, and so forth. And I plan all that out ahead of time. And then again, it plays for as long as you have the timeline set for each individual layer. Super easy to work with. And these are some great ideas on how I display content on layers using triggers in Storyline 2.